Alright guys, it's time to go back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to the craziest storylines you guys are ever going to see. Sentinels formal up against Optic once again last night. Fireworks flying on the main stage, but neither of these teams at the end of the weekend walk away with the championship at HCS Rally. Very much in to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, it's the best thing you can too. Top this channel reach new people. And please consider subscribing as well if you have not yet already, especially if you're enjoying some of the new Halo stuff we are bringing out here on this channel. It's an interesting time, really, because Call of Duty is pretty much at the deadest it has ever been. When the CDL kicks off again, I certainly, obviously, you know, I'm not going to go away from CDL stuff. The personalities of Storylines are fantastic. But for now, Halo is totally, you know, just completely destroyed Call of Duty on all fronts. So we just have to talk about it. You guys had some great comments, really, on yesterday's video, saying they're like, look, okay, you know, why not keep the Halo stuff on this channel, at least for now? I think in the short term, that's definitely the play. I'm going to kind of keep doing what I'm doing, talk about some Halo stuff over here, Call of Duty stuff when it's relevant. But when the CDL kicks off and gets back into its groove, I want to keep talking about Halo stuff on a separate channel, really, because I think doing it on this channel, like, um, it's not really good for the algorithm when there's people who might be interested in Halo and other people who might be interested in CODs, and then, you know, they click on different videos depending on what they're interested in, and then YouTube doesn't like it because it's not really sure which videos to serve up to which people. So um, it's better to separate things in theory. For now, we're going to talk about things, because really, on this channel, I just want to talk about what the Call of Duty competitive community is talking about. And if that's Halo, then it's going to be Halo, right? And, um, you know, I want to do the Halo stuff elsewhere because that's really captivated my attention and the rest of the COD scene's attention over the last couple of weeks. So we'll probably keep doing what I'm doing for now. And then um, over the next couple of weeks or so, I'll start up another Halo channel and then we might get things going over there towards the start of the new season when Call of Duty is going to start actually kicking back to gear. And we have some things to talk about over on that front as well, with hopefully some equally crazy storylines to what we've got in the Halo scene right now. So let's just dive into things. Championships. Sunday on the HCS Riley side. This, of course, was the Optic squad. And, um, I mean, look, they're just completely destroying us on every front right now. At least, you know, Halo over Call of Duty because Puckett's even back in business. Of course, he was doing Halo before he was doing Call of Duty. But just, um, you know, crazy to see, really, the fact that this event was just so well done from so many perspectives. Now, of course, Formal was also competing. Gotta dig deep today, he says, playing for Sentinels despite being under the Optic heading. And, um, I mean, of course, we looked at yesterday the fact that Optic took them down pretty comfortably indeed. That was not the same story when they rematched up again in, um, well, in yesterday's matchup. So as you can see right here, Optic played Cloud9 in the winner's side in the winner's semis. This was a ridiculous game. Cloud9 went up 2-0 pretty early on, and then there was an insane clutch situation ready at the end. I think there was even a team kill that came through from Cloud9. They got to 99 points in the final round with the odd ball. Now, um, they just needed one more second holding the ball to win the entire game. They were at 99 points, and um, Optic managed to take him down, get the cap, and this is the final round as well of oddball. It's first to two out of the three rounds. And um, you basically hold the ball, you get one second every, well, second you're holding the thing. Thing, and Optic end up winning it 100 to 99 in the very final round to take it to a game five. But they do not win the game five. Cloud9 end up winning that one. It was um it was a really crazy series to be honest. Optic obviously an incredible team. Cloud9 we talked about yesterday. Obviously also an incredible squad. The squad that won the 2018 World Championship. This also game five was like um, I'm pretty sure Optic were up like 22 to 13 or something at a time, and then they really swung it back in their favour. Did this Cloud9 guys here on this uh, Slayer game five? So um, well in the end Optic dropped down to the losers, and who will they face in the losers bracket? None other than Formals Sentinels again. So Frosty was going off on the main stage in the earlier series, as Formal says right here, G's due to SSG, that of course being the space station squad that he was actually playing with before he got picked up onto Sentinels, Ascend and, you know, unsigned or whatever. We continue the run as he goes on to say, and, um, well, then they play up against Optic. This was truly incredible, frankly. Frosty, like, um... I think a lot of people were really looking at this thing and wow, this guy maybe didn't get enough respect as he deserved when he was in the Call of Duty scene. Because he was teaming on, um, well, he was playing Black Ops 4 at a pretty high competitive level. I think he played on maybe Enigma 6 for a time and also the Midnight Esports squad. And then, um, of course, at Florida Mutineers, right, in the Modern Warfare season, winning like three championships in that event, none of them being on LAN. But um, still, a very solid player, very serviceable player in Call of Duty. But in Halo, this guy's completely on another level. Game 1, he goes 24 in 12 and Formal was just sitting back and relaxing, to be honest, while Frosty was just completely taking over the game. They win the game one. They also go on and take the game. Two Optics' worst nightmare say the Sentinels right here. And, um, well, they take the game two, but the reverse sweep is potentially on the cards. Optic win the game three. They take it to an oddball as well. Optic win this one. And, I mean, you know, just and some more crazy moments, quite honestly. Formal did not have the greatest game four right here by any means. And, frankly, like the entire weekend from what we'd seen broadcasted, Formal hadn't really had that many particularly standout maps. He was doing some solid stuff for the team. Not exactly expected to be phenomenal, given, like, um, yeah, he's new to this squad. It's tough to say exactly how 
how he's going to perform on it. But, um, well, game five, he certainly showed another level. This is just like, you couldn't make these storylines up, really. It's just incredible to see. Formal, who wasn't even meant to be on this Sentinel team because Royal 2 was meant to be on it. But before the tournament even kicked off, Royal 2 got banned for the geofiltering stuff. So, you know, Formal subs in. And now they play Optic twice on the weekend while Formal is still part of an Optic team. It's, um, it's just incredible to see. And this is when, like, Formal goes next level. It was also his birthday yesterday as well, which just shows things that, you know, like, Formal was completely ridiculous. He started off this game five Slayer 15 and 3. He finished it 21 and 9. Gets the final kill as well with the Rockets. Now, um, you know, just, you can't make this stuff up, right? He plays against Optic. Game five, Formal goes off on the main stage, dominates the Optic team, really, the entire game, and, um, and knocks them out of the tournament, right? Packs their bags, and Sinsels and Formal continue on in the tourney, knocking Optic out, right? Kind of crazy, right? But, um, that's just how things go sometimes, right? So, incredible stuff. What I was amazed at, frankly, is when Optic left this tournament, when they got knocked out of this tournament by Formal and Sentinels, the viewership didn't just drop off a cliff. In Call of Duty, the viewership and Optic lose tends to, you know, tend to fall off pretty drastically. Whereas in this game, that wasn't the case at all. If anything, the viewership started increasing, despite the fact that Optic are probably still the biggest brand and biggest name in the Halo size. But um, still, people stuck around, right? People were so enthralled by these storylines, they wanted to stick around and see what was happening. The viewership, if anything, continued to increase throughout the entire tournament. Of course, there was drops and stuff like that, which give benefits towards, you know, players who were sticking around. But um, still, I thought it was really impressive. As accuracy says that like, there was a lot of reaction to this, understandably, on the timeline. Formal said, oh, I am Optic, right? He took the guys down. And, um, you know, Nate Tot's talking about it as well. This, I thought, was pretty interesting, right? Because 100 Thieves, you'd imagine, are looking at Halo thinking, okay, wow, all these organizations are in Halo. We've got to get a team as well. You know, wouldn't they come out and say, look, Formal, it's time for you to join us, right? To, like, you know, give him the bag to join 100 Thieves. Maybe, like, um, I don't know if you'd want to leave Optic, right? But, like, I don't know. Maybe he could play for 100 Thieves somehow. Not really sure if they could come to an arrangement there. Maybe it'd be possible. But um, I imagine Nate Tot wants to get involved some way or another. Scump, of course, drops this on the time of H4F, horny for 4 of course. Like, um, you know, definitely had a good time watching him yesterday. And yeah, I mean, the reaction here was pretty immense, to be honest, and formal. Like, he goes off on the game five, I don't, like, I don't know, he just fist bumps the rest of his squads, and, um, and they get out of there. Because these are teams that, yeah, th there's definitely some friction between these two rosters, right? Like, uh, even before this matchup. Like, um, if Royal 2 was here, I'm sure the reaction might have even been more dramatic on the timeline, but just because formal was there, it was like, okay, it's kind of his team. He always leaves Frosty hanging here, by the way. But yeah, I mean, what a duo it was at the end of it. And um, I mean, yeah, Sensor move on in the tournament. As Clay says, you know, Formal didn't even say GG's to his team, just dropped 20, walked off stage, I'm crying. Like, this Formal guy was on another level, and as he says, whoa, that game 5 I was turned right. That's the thing, like, everyone was watching this last night for the Call of Duty scene, and, um, well, who could blame them, right? An actual proper competitive FPS game, play with a controller. You can't make this stuff up. As Sentinels say, don't let the door hit you on the way out at Optic. Sentinels win and move on. So, just unbelievable, right? The Formal joins this team, loving competing in Halo again, and knocks out Optic the first event back. Like, um, it's just incredible stuff. This also, I noticed like, I just tweeted this out. I thought this was a pretty mundane tweet, to be honest. And, like, it got, like, 3,000 likes. I don't understand. Like, the Halo community, like, everyone was popping off. Like, all the tweets I've done about the Halo stuff the last couple of days have just popped off way more than Call of Duty stuff tends to do. So, just maybe shows that, um, we should start moving in that direction, maybe. Now, um, you know, of course, they move on in the tournament. FaZe, a really good team as well. They had Snipe Down just come back from playing Apex Legends. And, uh, well, they play Sentinels. This was an incredible game, honestly. I'm not really sure what you guys think about this whole, um, well, the, the counter cap situation, really, in Halo. So, um, basically, FaZe get a cap and it's now four to three the cap gets taken or the flag gets taken back out by sentinels and um the way this works like this is in overtime is in like the clock has run out but because the flag's out the game's still continuing onwards and um the sentinel guys get the flag all the way back to their base but boo boo doo i'm pretty sure comes in and he just pulls the other flag out and because their flag isn't at base like um the timer basically goes to zero and it's ggs so kind of incredible really like a uh, boo boo actually made this play to make it happen not exactly yeah i guess like look at it he comes flying in right here puts the flag out and um that's enough to end the game because um, that's just how it works, I guess. Which maybe is good or maybe it's bad, I don't really know. It's tough to say whether that should be changed or not. But um, yeah, FaZe knock out Sentinels in the end. So Sentinels finish top four, which um, I mean, FaZe continue on. GG's FaZe lost 3-1. As Formal says, damn unfortunate. I appreciate the love all weekend. I'm sure like um, with his performance, especially in the Optic series, he's going to fly straight onto another top team if he wants to, right? That was kind of his thinking before the weekends. Like, um, you know, Sentinels are going to bring back Royal 2 when they can. So Formal's going to try and find another opportunity out there somewhere. You'd imagine he's going to find one on one of these other top teams. As I said, 100 Thieves might want to get involved. I'm not sure how that's going to go. I'll do my best to try and keep you guys updated. As Scum says, you know, happy birthday to my absolute Joe. It was a joy to watch you compete this weekend. You know, so H4F, hashtag TGP, all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, definitely the timeline was absolutely popping off as a result of this. But, of course, that was not where the tournament ended. So, Optic are already out. Sentinels are already out. But it was FaZe, E United, and Cloud9 still continuing onwards. E United and Cloud9 go all the way down to a game five. It's E United that take it. So, incredible, really, that E United, like, um, you know, they don't seem to have quite the money and the resources to get into some sort of franchise leagues because
because of course we saw like um you know they won the world championship in black ops 4 franchise league comes in the organization doesn't get a spot but pretty much when there's no franchising involved like um united always is a, a scary organization that does well with them um, with some great pieces so um, you know congratulations to these guys they take down phase here in the game five they go on to the grand finals up against uh, cloud nine and um this also like uh, the drama just does not stop from all angles like i'm pretty sure bb do be like i'm um, dropped spartan or something or like they left spartan to go and join another team in the phase guys before this tournament and he was popping off on the stage against him just saying you know why did you drop me all this type of stuff so the drama and halo and the personalities like um honestly like yeah, they, they rifle call of duty pretty damn well to be honest it's just because we haven't seen them for the last several years because halo has been completely in the mud but um you know it's certainly back in business right now the three hundred and fifty thousand dollar hcs rally champions the kickoff tournament are cloud nine in the end they take down um well it was going to be a double best of seven in the grand finals but uh, cloud nine win the first one four to one they take the tournament as you can see eco renegade stella these are the three guys of the spy squad the one the 2018 world championship with shotzi on the team and then penguin is kind of their new up-and-coming guy they've brought in as well they win this first tournament impressive stuff i don't know how long exactly we're gonna have to wait to the next one this was the bracket there if you guys just want to see it's so optic versus sentinels that was that crazy matchup with all those storylines we discussed right here and then the rest of the tournament as you can see united end up beating phase at the end of it just to take their spot in the grand finals but cloud nine win it 4-1 in the end it would have been i'm pretty sure another best of nine or best of seven sorry if um if he united have won this one it's the double elimination type stuff which uh, apparently cdl say is too confusing for regular viewers but um still cloud nine certainly the best team here this matchup was insane there were so many great matchups and um you know it just sets the storyline of the scene so nicely for the rest of that year as well and uh, well also just to add on to things as we close out the video the viewership was absolutely through the roof this was really impressive to me and it's not really a massive surprise when not only if you got drops in the stream which obviously help but it definitely gets people engaged and involved going forwards people want the um yeah, the in-game items and stuff they tune in they say okay this is actually pretty cool maybe i'll tune in next time as well the viewership was going crazy it even as i said got better when optic went out to the tournament which i thought was insane and um it peaked at around about 260,000 plus peak viewers if you're looking at things from uh, the also the co-stream perspective like skump was co-streaming this watch party effectively for the halo tournament to 20 plus thousand viewers last night which is like way more than it gets normally like playing vanguard or anything which makes sense right hs rally a bigger event than just some team scrims but just goes to show that like wow all the call of duty guys were getting involved and that the main stream had like almost 200,000 or something and this also like the fact of the matter is the grand finals was at like 3 a.m like in europe right so i was asleep for it like um the entirety of europe was basically asleep so it could have even been better than this right which just goes to show you know halo definitely in a very promising position right now and i've got to have a serious thought about how exactly we tackle this channel going forward right because um halo's very entertaining i can't deny it and uh, well if you guys are enjoying it as well we're going to continue to talk about it over the coming days and weeks i'm sure but very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did enjoy it hitting that like button tells the youtube gods this is a good video i just like you should see it as well and i've grow the competitive halo community thanks for watching as always take care and i will see you next time